stop leaving music royalties on the table. On this channel, we have released videos talking about kind of the three categories of how you're going to collect your music royalties. We have covered music distribution as kind of one vertical. We've covered sound exchange as another vertical. And today we're going to talk about performance rights organizations, specifically BMI versus ASCAP. Now I'll be sure to link the other videos down in the description below in case you missed those. But as it pertains to our discussion today, you gotta be registered on either BMI or ASCAP. And there are a lot of questions that my clients have in regards to which one is better. What makes more sense? Can I get more money from one versus another? So in today's video, I'm going to go over all of that when I discuss BMI versus ASCAP. Hi guys, I'm Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and author of How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent musician. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our weekly videos helping you with your music career, getting you to that next level, and making sure you're earning all your music royalties. Now, as a starting point, when we say performance rights organizations or PROs, we're talking about these organizations that exist to collect music royalties and to pay you your earnings. Now, the thing is that PROs exist all around the world. But in the United States, the two biggest are BMI and ASCAP. And a common question that clients have is, of course, well, let's compare the two. Which one is better? Starting with, let's say, sign-up fees. On BMI, there's no fee to register as a writer. So you register as a writer, you get a free account, you can add your music, and then you can collect your earnings from there. Conversely, with ASCAP, there is a registration fee and a membership fee of $50. Now, you only pay the fee one time, there are no renewals or anything like that, but there is a $50 sign-up fee. If you happen to be, let's say, a music publisher and you're registering a publishing account on BMI, the expense can be anywhere between $150 to $250, depending on whether you're the sole owner or whether your business is a limited liability company, you have additional members, in which case you're going to pay the higher fee of $250. Conversely, when it comes to registering as a publisher on ASCAP, the registration fee is only $50. So while there might be a fee associated for a writer registering on ASCAP versus no fee for a BMI, it's definitely a little bit cheaper to register as a publisher on ASCAP. The way it works is that it kind of doesn't matter which one you decide to go with, just pick one. Now for me, I registered with BMI, I've been with them for a long time and I've had a pretty good experience, but the thing is they do the same thing. So they're going to collect earnings that are connected to your music based on public performances. And public performances are going to be things like your music is publicly performed at a live show, or it's performed via a radio station, it's performed in a restaurant or in a nightclub. So all of those are considered public performances. The payments are automatically sent to the PROs and then you get paid based on who you're registered with. As far as the consistency of the payments, they're quarterly, so it means that you get paid four times in a one 12-month cycle, and with them come things like statements, and so, for example, if you got paid, you get to see the amount that you were paid, you get to see where those earnings came from, and so again, that's, you know, there's some similar things that both of these organizations are going to do, so that's why they say, you know, it's really, it doesn't matter where you end up registering, just make sure you are registered somewhere. Don't leave money on the table. Make sure you are always collecting all of your music royalties. When it comes to some of the more finer details, I have heard that some of the big record labels have members who sit on the board of ASCAP versus that's not the kind of thing that's kind of going on at BMI. I've also heard that, you know, for a while ASCAP, you know, way back in the day, wasn't allowing certain genres of music and was kind of suppressing them. And I don't know how much truth is to that, but the point just of being that now both companies really do try to operate in the same kind of way to protect musicians rights, make sure everyone gets paid. And you know, for those of my clients who are registered with ASCAP, I've heard nothing but good kind of feedback from them. Again, you know, I've solely been with BMI and so that's really all that I can personally say from my personal experience. Now you might ask, well, what about international royalties? Because we talked about the fact that BMI and ASCAP are 
organizations that collect and are within the United States, but do they collect international royalties? And the answer is yes. You can and should at some point go and try to register your music with other PROs in different countries. So for example, if you have a decent fan base in the UK, you gotta go to UK, go to their PRO, make sure your music is registered there so you can collect. However, my understanding is that BMI and ASCAP are collecting international royalties and they can do this because they have separate agreements with different PROs in different countries. And so they come up with an agreement so that those PROs are sending them the royalties and then they can then pay you from there. As of the recording of this video, ASCAP has 83 agreements with different PROs versus BMI, which has agreements with 93 PROs around the world. So not sure if that's gonna make a difference for you, but thought I would include it as part of this video. So like I said at the beginning of the video, making sure you are registered with either BMI or ASCAP is gonna be an essential piece of making sure that you're collecting all your music revenue, but you gotta do that in addition to making sure all your music is registered on SoundExchange. Again, if you haven't watched that video, link down in the description below, because this is money you can't leave on the table. You make sure that you're getting your money paid from your distributor. You make sure you're getting your money from SoundExchange, and then let's say if you're with BMI, get your money from BMI. And another thing that kind of comes up is that when you register with one of these PROs, you get a number. So for example, if you're with BMI, a co-writer, a producer might say, hey, I need your BMI number so we can register you, make sure you're getting your share of earnings. And so that's another reason why you wanna be kind of prepared, look pro. You've already done it, you already have your number, and that's gonna be kind of a good look for you. And if you've made it this far into the video, you're obviously serious about your music career. You wanna know how you're gonna get your music royalties, but you probably wanna make sure you know how to protect yourself as well. To take it a step further, be sure to check out How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business, which is now available as a direct digital download, which means you can get it to your device right now. Just check out that link down in the description below. This is not only your A to Z guide on having a successful music career, but I actually go that step further to give you music contracts so you can stay legally protected. If you're interested in checking out a little of what I do, be sure to search Miss Crystal on all music platforms. And I'll be sure to link a playlist of my music videos at the end of this video. Be sure to come say hi on social media. I'm definitely the most active on Instagram and it's always amazing to meet you guys. I'm gonna get out of here, but don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from your new favorite redhead. I'm Miss Crystal, bye.